everyone, welcome to New Bear. I'm Monique and today I'm introducing Tilly. Tilly is the sixth butterfly in the Kaleidoscope project. She has a pearl tattered body and pointed chains for her wings. I'll include links to detailed videos of both of these techniques down below for anyone who needs a little bit of extra help. I'll also include a link for the pattern. Now if you've been following the Kaleidoscope project you'll know that at the start of every butterfly video there is a small segment on ways of tying your antenna. You'll also know that you can skip through this segment by using the timestamps. You're going to need two shuttles, an auxiliary thread, three marker threads and a clip or a peg, even a piece of tape. We just need something to anchor our threads while we tie a square knot to get started. We're going to do a couple of things a little bit differently with Tilly today. So let's check it out. Before we start any tatting, I'm going to show you two different ways we can tie our antenna. Now that might seem a little weird since we don't have any butterflies yet, but I want to show you this first up because the way we tie the antenna will determine how much thread we need to leave for the tail. If you don't have a lot of thread, you won't want to be excessive with your antenna knots. You might finish up a shuttle with just enough for your butterfly. If that's the case, a small single wrap knot will work well. We're going to pretend that I've got a butterfly back here. I'm just going to tie a loose knot. On each side. I'm going to tape my butterfly to the table. Holding the end of the thread with your finger. Use something like a toothpick or a tapestry needle. I'm going to use my little wooden spike. Place that into the middle of the knot. Now we can position our knot wherever we want it to be. By doing the same thing with the other side, again our spike allows us to position the knot exactly where we want it. So we're able to make our antenna knots nice and even. If you have a little more thread to play with, pass the end through the eye of a needle without splitting the ply is ideal. Hold the thread in your left hand, about 10, maybe 12 centimetres back from the needle. Again, we have our imaginary butterfly back here, holding the needle by its tip. Back it up so you can pinch the eye of the needle and the thread together. Take hold of the thread. I haven't got enough there. Take hold of the thread from above the needle not the one down here, we want the thread from the top. Wrap your needle three times and then slide those wraps down along the needle, snug them together. This thread comes into the pinch. So if I can show you without losing the lot, that's what we have. Holding the wraps between your fingers, pull your needle through. And we have a three wrapped knot. Just gives a little bit more bulk to the knot for our antenna. So the antenna you decide to use will dictate how much thread you need or rather the amount of thread you have will dictate which antenna you can use. I want to do a quick explanation before we start. I've used China cord to make a large sample of the body. Tilly has a lot happening in a small amount of real estate. So I'm hoping this will help make it easier for you to follow what we're going to be doing. 
For this sample I've used four different colours so you can see what's going on. I've tied them in a knot at the base. In reality we're going to be working with two threads and I'll show you how that works when we start making the butterfly. We have two core threads, six stitches on this side and five on this side. So a total of 11. Our stitches are offset and lie flat. The loop between our stitches is known as a purl. To make our wings sit evenly on each side, because there's nothing worse than a lopsided butterfly, we're joining through the waistband on one side and the purl on the other. When we work purl tatting, and I'll do this much slower in a minute, I just wanted to show you when we work our purl stitches, the stitches on this side look like they're the wrong way up. When we put our shuttle to the back of our hand, the stitch rolls out and sits flat. We don't want that this time. We want our stitch to stay rolled in because that gives us the ridge for the body. So when you return your shuttle, try not to pull on the thread. If your stitch does roll out, don't stress. We can manipulate it later. I'm just going to show you on this bigger sample. We want our stitches to stay rolled in, giving us the ridge for the body. Leaving our stitches rolled in makes it challenging to know the location for our joins. So we're going to put markers in as we make the body. I use scrap thread for markers. As I mentioned earlier, it gets a little crowded in here. You might find it easier to use three different colours for your markers. The different colours can help with knowing which marker to pull out. You could use paper clips or stitch markers instead of thread, but the body has a total of 11 stitches. It's small. I find paper clips and stitch markers get in the way and are more of a hindrance than a help. Put a length of thread from each shuttle. We're going to be taking our tail ends and wrapping our hand for a chain. Now only this section of thread will be used, the rest is wasted. I hate wasting good thread even if it's only a small amount. So I'm going to attach my ends to a loading loop. You could tie your ends to a scrap piece of thread if you wanted to. We just need something that's going to give us a bit of length so that we can wrap our hand for a chain. And of course, if it doesn't bother you, you can just waste the thread. I'm going to measure roughly seven centimeters or so, about that much, from the beginning of your thread and place the clip or the tape, whatever you have to anchor your thread at that point. So we have our shuttles down here, our clip, and roughly seven centimeters of thread before our loading loop. I'm going to tie, if I can slip my threads, we're going to tie the first half of a square knot. Make sure your threads aren't tangled at the clip. We're tying right over left. Take your auxiliary thread, place it across the middle and tie the second half of the square knot left over right. Remove your clip. We have our auxiliary thread, a square knot, our seven centimeters of thread onto our loading loop or whatever extension thread we're using, shuttle one and shuttle two. Take hold of the auxiliary thread and set your hand up for a chain. Shuttle one sits over the back of your hand our chain set up. Shuttle 2 sits at the front. 
we're working six alternate stitches on each side of the core. All our stitches are wrapped, not flipped. Using shuttle two, work the second half, followed by the first half. Swap shuttles. Using shuttle one, work the first half. Pop your shuttle down while you place your marker. Goes over our core. Using shuttle one again, we're working the second half. Our marker sits in the middle of our stitch for shuttle one. Taking shuttle two. Our marker will now sit in our pearl as we work the second half, first half. Swap shuttles and work the next two stitches. First half, second half. Second half. First half. We're ready for our second marker using shuttle one. We're working the first half, placing our marker. Continuing with shuttle one, we're working second half. Swap shuttles, work the second half, followed by the first half. Our marker is in our pearl on this side and our stitch on this side. Swap shuttles, work the next two stitches. First half. Second half, second half, first half. We're ready for our third marker. Back to shuttle one. We're working the first half, placing our marker. Continuing with shuttle one, we work the second half. Back to shuttle two. Second half. First half. Remove your auxiliary thread not your marker threads, make sure it's the auxiliary thread. So if your stitches haven't rolled under, see that little ridge for our body. If you haven't got that, you can use your fingers to roll your stitches around. We're going to remove our loading loop or whatever extension thread you used and cut your shuttles off. Leave yourself a reasonably good tail from your shuttles. So I'll show you I have my mark threads. My core and my two shuttles. If I tie my shuttles to my core, the sides of my butterfly is going to be quite bulky. So I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to tie my two cores together and my two shuttles together. 
just going to tie a square knot. Now my knots sit in the centre of the body and I have, get that up, I have nice clean sides. Turning the body over, depending on how tight your pearl tatting is, your markers may have been sucked down into the middle of the body and that's going to make it quite difficult for you to pull it out later on. So before we start, just get a needle and pry that centre bit up just a little bit. Just so it's not so tricky for us to pull it out when we need to later. Pull 70 centimetres of thread from your shuttle. I've marked mine just with a dot using an air erasable sewing marker. Turn your butterfly upside down. This is going to be our antenna. Starting with what is now the top marker. I want to keep my marker on the other side so that's why we pried this bit out with the needle. You can pull it out completely if you prefer. If you do that, you'll need to use this side as a location when we come around to do the other wing. I just find the thread markers easier to see, so I'm leaving half of my marker in. So I'm going to pull this side out. Going down, joining to my thread on the top, we're joining with a lock join. Wrapping our hand for a chain. We're working a count of 13. We're ready for the pointed part of our chain. Loop the thread from your shuttle around your fingers back into the pinch. The loop doesn't have to stay on your fingers, it's just to get the loop. Work the next double stitch, making sure the first half sits right up against the previous stitch. We don't want any gaps here. Second half, pass your shuttle through the loop. We need to tighten our loop. Holding onto your stitches, pull on core thread until that loop disappears. Now we need to tighten this loop. So holding onto our stitches again, we pull on our shuttle until this loop. 
open that one up a little bit first and continue pulling on my shuttle thread. Continuing with our next stitch, first half needs to sit behind the last stitch that we made. Second half. Finishing out our chain, the full count here is nine. We just made one double stitch, so we're continuing with eight. Reverse your work and set your hand up for a ring. Now I'm going to work front side, back side for this butterfly. I think it looks nicer to have the picots and the pointed chains on the same side. I'm not going to go into detail about front side, back side now, but there is a link down below for anyone who needs extra help. The stitch count for our ring is one pico one pico one pico one, joining back to the middle marker and continuing with one pico one pico one. Ready for our next pointed chain, we're repeating what we did before, looping our shuttle thread, working the next double stitch, pass your shuttle through that loop, then close that loop using your core thread. Now we're closing this loop, pulling our shuttle. Work the next stitch so it sits underneath previous stitch our count is 15 we've just made one so we have 14 cut the tails 
we're taking our core thread down through our last marker. We're tying a square knot with our core, our core thread and our shuttle thread. Don't trim your tails yet, leave them nice and long. Now we start the other side. Keeping our work on the back side, we have all the antenna threads down here. This is the butt of the butterfly. We're going to start the second half by pulling another 70 centimeters from our shuttle and putting our mark there. And we're going to lock join to our first marker. If you're working front side, back side, keep in mind we're on the back of our work. So you'll be working rods. Make your lock join. We are chaining 13. Work our pointed chain by looping our thread. Walking the next double stitch. Pass your shuttle through that loop. Your first loop up. Put the second. If you're working rods, the next stitch needs to sit on top of the last one. If you're not working rods, this stitch will sit behind like it did last time. Continue your chain with eight. Reverse our work. Setting up for a ring, we're going to be working one pico one pico one pico one, joining back to the middle marker and continuing with one pico one pico one pico one. We are on the front side of our work.
reversing our work we get ready for our next chain we're on the back side again our last chain starts with a count of 12 we're working our pointed chain And finishing our, our chain with a count of 14. Again, if you're working front side, back side, the next stitch will sit on top of the previous one. If you're not working front side, back side, it will sit behind. your shuttle off leave a good tail take the core thread through the last marker And tie your core and shuttle together with a square knot. So I'm just going to hold the threads out of the way so you can see we want, <laughs> there's too much red, we want the threads from our wings, so the core and shuttle from the wings that we've just made. These four. And we want to run them up so they sit up the top with our body thread. I'm just going to use a needle to take the thread from my wing up to the same position as the core thread. I'm doing that for all four threads. So we want four threads on either side, holding on to the body of our butterfly. 
with our ring finger and our thumb. Take the top thread that sits on the top and we're going to twist it, clamping the twisted thread between our pointer finger and our middle finger while you twist the next one. on to all the twisted threads and let go of your butterfly and they will twist around from there we're going to tie a knot I'm going to cut that a little bit of a gap between my knot, probably about that much. And I'm going to use a needle just to fray the ends a little bit. And that is Tilly. Once again, I hope you've enjoyed making Tilly with me today. See you next time.